I welcome you to my class on narration or change of speech. And I hope you are very well. And we know that our uh, we are passing through a very crucial time. It's a very critical time that we are passing through. So I hope you must maintain the rules of health directed by our health ministry. You will have to wash your hands from time to time with soap and use sanitizer. And we must not go out of our homes unless and until we have emergency. Anyway, just look at this screen. I think you can see this screen. This is narration or speech. Uh, narration means a speech. That is whatever we say or whatever we express vocally or whatever we say is a speech and a speech of a speech is of two types uh, one is direct speech and the other is indirect speech so when we speak uh, directly and when we express the speech of the speaker intact or without bringing about any change then we call it direct speech and when we transform it into our own expression we do not speak in the language of the speaker we convert it into our expression and deliver it then we call it indirect speech. So look at this screen. <clears throat> speech is of two types. Direct speech and indirect speech. So direct speech is the expression of the speaker intact without having any change. And indirect speech is a changed version of the speech of the speaker while it is converted into uh, the speaker's version, then we call it indirect speech. Now direct speech, in this form, the actual words of the speaker are put in quotes. You know, quotation, quotation mark or inverted comma. We know quotation mark or inverted comma. We use quotation mark or inverted comma on both the sides of the direct speech. Just look at this example. Ruma said, I am very busy. So we find here two parts. In this sentence, we find two parts here. We find two parts. One is Ruma said this very part occurs out of body. For that reason, uh, the part that we find in this part that is said is known as reporting part. Report means to say. Report means to say. So reporting verb means the verb which says something, the verb which gives an expression is known as reporting verb. Report means to say. That is the verb which says something or the verb which reports something. Uh, so this said is the reporting verb. And now come to this part which we find within to inverted commas. 
we find inverted comma at the beginning of this speech and we find another comma at the end of the speech this is called inverted uh, comma or it is also called quotation mark so why do we call it quotation quotation mark we call it quotation mark because it marks the quotation quotation means the intact expression of the speech so if your words are intact or without any change delivered then we call it quotation and quotation is usually marked by these commas for that reason we call these commas quotation mark or inverted commas so in direct speech we find inverted commas we must put inverted commas to express our speech intact intact means without any change uh, now come to this very uh, this very part that is indirect speech so what is indirect speech indirect speech is the changed version of the direct speech so when we express the ideas within quotation marks then we call it and when we convert it into the speech of the other person then we call it indirect speech in this form the actual words of the speakers are transformed or said or written in a simple manner so why do we say simple manner we call it simple manner suppose your direct speech is an interrogative sentence or an exclamatory sentence or an imperative sentence or an optative sentence so whatever sentence it may be whenever you will transform it into indirect it must be assertive it should be simplified into assertive so whatever the sentence may be in direct speech in direct speech a sentence may be interrogative it may be imperative or it may be exclamatory but whenever you will transform it into indirect it must be assertive for that reason we have uh, written here in this form the actual words of the speaker are transformed and said or written in a simple manner now the indirect uh, form of a sentence look at this indirect form of a sentence uh, ruma said that he was very busy then so ruma said this this you, you find this zoom it over the diagram protein part okay and the other part which is starts with uh that this very part says that it is an indirect speech because we do not use here quotation marks for example ruma said that he was very busy then okay this is indirect speech now come to some rules of conversion conversion of a direct speech into an indirect speech we must follow some rules to change a direct speech into indirect speech there are five basic things that have to be changed while converting a direct speech to an indirect speech okay uh just look at this number one rule to change the reporting verb according to the reported speech 
So if the reported speech is interrogated, then the reporting verb will be asked. Or if the reporting reported speech is an order belonging to interrogated sentence, then whenever you will transform it into indirect, the reporting verb will be order. Or if it is an exclamatory sentence, if your uh, reported speech is an exclamatory sentence, then you will uh, transform your reporting verb into exclaim. So these are the basic rules that we must keep in mind. Whenever we will try to change our direct speech into an indirect speech, at first we have to be careful about the identification of the speech. If the speech is assertive, then in indirect speech, the reporting part will be say or tell. If it is interrogated, then the reporting part will be ask. If it is imperative, imperative uh, covers different expressions, for example, order, request, advice, prohibition. Uh, so these are the, these are command. These are some of the expressions that belong to imperative sentence. So at first you have to learn to identify these expressions and categorize them into different categories. If you can do it correctly, then you can decide your reporting part. Otherwise, you will have the chance of making mistakes. Now come to rule number two. To remove the inverted commas, to remove the inverted commas, from the direct speech and replace them with an appropriate conjunction. So whenever you will transform a sentence into indirect speech, then you must remove the inverted comma. And in the place of inverted comma, you have to put a conjunction. If it is assertive, then you will put that. If it is interrogated, then you have to put here if or whether. But if the interrogative sentence begins with wh, suppose who, which, what, whom, how, when, where, whenever. Uh, if the direct speech starts with this wh question, then you must not uh, put any conjunction at the beginning of the changed speech. So it's very important. But if the question is yes, no question, suppose if the quotation starts with uh, do, does, have, has, or am, is, are, was, where, then you have to put if or whether replacing the inverted comma while you will transform the sentence into indirect. Then to change the pronoun of reported speech according. So you have to change the pronoun. Suppose I may be he or she. Uh, for example, I just like to give you an example. I like to write for your sake. Uh, suppose he said, he said, I am. Actually, nowadays it's very difficult to be happy because we are surrounded by so many 
soldiers of corona okay these corona soldiers are hunting our people so we are not happy now anyway she said i am happy it's a direct speech this inverted comma says that the speech of the subject she is put within inverted commas intact without any change so now if you are asked to transform it into indirect then what will you say you will say she said or you may also write she told both are correct she said or she told then replacing inverted comma we will replace inverted comma with that so why because the speech within quotation marks says that it's an assertive sentence as it is an assertive sentence we have to replace the quotation mark with that so she said or she told that now i am happy who is this i this i this pronoun refers to she for that reason it will be transformed into she then the tense is to be considered very minutely we must not escape the issues of tenses i am happy this is present in definitions and on the other hand reporting verb said is in past tense so if the reporting verb is in past tense then in indirect speech the uh, tense of the reported speech must be changed you must change the tense of the reported speech i am happy this is present indefinite if it is present indefinite and if the reporting verb is in past tense then while changing it into indirect you have to you past indefinite so present indefinite will be transformed into past indefinite so she was okay so some important things we have to consider number 1 we have to identify the reported speech whether it is sir yes actually you are not audible most probably your internet connection is very uh, weak okay i will take your question at the end of my class okay just try to understand and concentrate and put note if you don't understand anything just put your note and towards the end of my class you will question me i will give you 5 uh, minutes at the end of my class and at that time we will have interaction regarding our uh, problems uh okay now change the adverbs of the direct speech we have to change the adverb of the direct speech for example just look at this example look at this example rajib said to me rajib said to me i shall go to the picture picture means cinema i shall go to the picture today i shall go to the picture today rajiv said to me i shall go to the picture today so rajiv said to me this very part contains a verb that is said and we call this verb reporting verb we call it reporting verb okay and then come to the next part that we find within 
uh, inverted commas. I shall go to the picture today. This is direct speech, and this speech is a quotation of Rajiv. And just your duty at first, you have to identify this quotation whether it is assertive or interrogative or imperative or optative or explicit. And so far, I believe uh, on the basis of the structure or while you are examining the structure of this sentence, you are sure that this sentence belongs to assertive. I think I am right. It is an assertive sentence. So this is your first duty to identify the sentence. And then the second duty that you have to do is to identify the reporting part and its tense. Rajiv said this is reporting verb said and it is in past tense. If the reporting verb is in past tense, while you will translate the sentence into indirect, you must change the tense. Change the tense of the Direct speech. If it is present indefinite, in indirect speech it will be past indefinite. If it is present continuous, it will be past continuous. If it is present perfect, it will be past perfect. If it is future, then it will be future in the past. I do not say future indefinite or future continuous or future perfect. Actually, I say future. If it is future tense, whatever category it may be. If it is in future tense, then we have to transform it into future in the past. Future in the past means, suppose will will be transformed into would. Would gives you the flavor of future tense. And at the same time, it indicates the past incident, would. So would contains the flavor of future but it gives the sense of the past tense. For that reason, we call it future in the past. Future in the past means the combination of future tense and past tense. While we will transform uh, will into would, then it will be, uh, it, we, we call it future in the past. Okay? So anyway, uh, what will be the indirect form of this sentence? Rajiv told me. If you say, sir, I will write here, say, I will not change, say it into uh, told, yes, then you are also right. Okay. So you may also write here, said. Rajiv said, or Rajiv told uh, me that, that we replace this inverted comma with that as the direct speech is assertive. For that reason, we use that here. The conjunction will be that. If it were interrogative, then we might have put here if or whether. If it were imperative, then we might have put here uh, two. Okay. If it were exclamatory, then we might have put here that. So these are the sense that you have to Keep in mind. Anyway, Rajiv told me that he would. So why do we use would? You must not write here should. Why? Because after he, we use actually will. And will, if we convert will into past tense, then it would be would. After he, we do not usually use shall. After he, we usually use will. And will is to be converted into past tense, as our reporting verb is in past tense. For that reason, we have written here would. All right. So Rajiv told me that he would go to the picture. Now today is an adverb here. Today is the adverb here. And this adverb today will be transformed, will be transformed into that. Okay, so for that reason, in the rules, we have already learned four rules. 
one of the rules was uh, that the change of adverbs of the direct speech. That is, if you find an adverb in, in direct speech, then in indirect speech, it must be changed. Actually, why should we change these adverbs? We, we must change these adverbs to maintain the sequence of tenses or to maintain the time sequence. Otherwise, our time will not be harmonious. There will be a sort of anomaly and the sentence will lose its uh, validity. You know, in Bangla, we call Joggota. If you do not uh, assert in or if you cannot assure Joggota or validity of a sentence, then that very sentence is not acceptable if you say the bird is flying it is acceptable because birds usually fly but if you say the cow is flying this is not acceptable because cow does not fly or cannot fly so this is called the validity of the sentence so if we want to assure or if we want to ascertain the authenticity of a sentence validity of a sentence and uh, the meaning of the sentence, if we want to make the meaning of a sentence believable or convincing, we must maintain sequence of tenses. Okay. Now, come to this list, rules of change of pronouns. It's a very important list. And we have to change these words from direct to indirect. If we find I, that is a nominative. Nominatives means subjects. I may work as a subject. We works as a subject. You also works as a subject. He, she, they. As these can work as subjects, we call them nominatives. Okay, then possessive. Possessive, suppose my, our, yours, he is hard, there. These are possessives. An object, object for me, us, you, him, her, them. So nominative is I, possessive is my, objective is me, and reflexive, myself. So the reflexive of I is myself. A reflexive of we is ourselves. A reflexive of they is themselves. So these things are to be learned minutely. Okay? <clears throat> now come to uh, this very particular thing. First person pronoun of reported speech is changed according to the subject of reporting Bahar. Uh, you know, these are the rules of transformation of direct speech into indirect speech. You, 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 I, I believe you know all these rules and you have already learned these rules in your 11 class and 12 class. These are very easy rules and you know all these things. I just like to uh, teach you one thing that are very, very important, uh, that is very, very important, and it is about rules of change of bhar or tenses. So how do tenses change? Suppose, before going to discuss it in detail, I like to make you acquainted with this example. Just look at this example. The teacher says, comma, inverted comma, Gayatri performs on the stage. Gayatri performs on the stage. So the reporting verb here says, reporting verb says, is a present tense. Okay? So mark, if the Reporting verb is in present tense. Then the tense of the reported speech must not change. 
It's very important. You must not make any mistake. If the reporting verb is in past tense, then in indirect speech, the tense of the reported speech must change. But if the reporting verb is in present tense or future tense, then it must not, then the reported speech must not uh, take a different tense. Its tense will be same. For example, the teacher says that Gayatri performs on the stage. So Gayatri performed. If you write performed, then it will be wrong because the reporting verb is in present tense. Uh, last of all, I like to tell you about another rule which is very, very important and most of the students do not uh, or cannot maintain it. If you find yes or no in a direct speech, in indirect speech, you must not write replied in the affirmative or replied in the negative. Because modern English says that it's a wrong rule. So what is the correct rule? Modern English says that you have to repeat the verb. Suppose he said, uh, have you gone to school? He said to me, have you gone to school? I answered yes. Then what would be the indirect form? He asked me if I had gone to school. I replied that I had. I replied in the affirmative, you, you must not write it, okay? If you write, uh, I replied in the affirmative, that is the old fashioned use that is obsolete use. The modern English grammar says that this is uh, old, this is an old fashioned English. So we have to avoid it. We will write, uh, I replied that I had gone to school or, or, or I, I replied if it is no, then I will say I replied that I had not. If it is yes, then I replied that I had. If it is no, I replied that I had not. All right. 